All right, good morning, Legacy Church. We're going to get started today. Why don't we all stand to our feet? Come on, let's put our hands together today. Help me sing it out. I give you glory. I give you glory for all you've brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Yes, I'm moving forward to follow after you. Now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Come on, somebody help me sing it. Your presence, come on. It's an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Oh, your presence, your on how many believe that the cross before me my hope on things above and in you jesus the best is yet to come come on church your presence is in the How many know this is a special service today? We've come to celebrate what the Lord is doing in our lives today. Come on, you may take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just give you thanks today, Lord. We just give you glory, God. Father, for the gift of our salvation, Lord. Father, for the freedom we find in you, God. 
We ask that you would just have your way, Lord. Have your way in this service today, God. Thank you, Jesus. And you are worthy of it all. Come on, let's give him thanks today. Sing it with us. You are. You are worthy of it all. Come on, he's worthy today. For from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come on, let it go this morning. Sing it out. You are. You are worthy of it all. Yes, you are, Lord. You are worthy of it all. Oh, Jesus. For from you are all things. To you are all. You deserve. You deserve the glory. All the same. good thing we have comes from the Father up above. Amen. Come on, how many know it's true? He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. He deserves that we don't hold back this morning. Father, you deserve all our attention, all our adoration. You are worthy. You are worthy. You've made me new. You've made me new. Oh, and you deserve, and you deserve the glory. And day and night, night and day, let it set right. Day and night, night and day, let Come on, can you sing it out this morning? Oh, day and night, night. Come on. Day and night. Right. Day and night. Day and day and night. Oh, day and night. 
we stand to our feet for a few moments this morning, church? Amen. Do we have any thankful hearts in the building? How many thankful for what God has done in our lives today? Come on, come on. You can raise your hand. You can shout it out. How many are thankful for what God has done in our lives? Come on, we know that God has saved us. We've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We've been set free. We've been made new. We have hope in Jesus today. That's all from the Lord. That's all from the creator of heaven and earth. You are worthy of it all. Come on, so help us sing it out today. You are. You are worthy of it all. There you go. Sing it out, church. From you are all things. For from you are all things. There you go. To you are all you deserve. You deserve the glory. Come on, in unity this morning, church. You are worthy of it all. That's right, you are worthy. You are worthy of it all. From you, Lord. For from you are all things. And to you. You deserve the glory. Come on, we're just going to sing that one more time all together. You are. You are worthy of it all. Sing it, church. Yes, you are. And you are worthy of it all. Beautiful. Keep singing it today. For from you, for from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come on, let's get excited and give some thanks this morning. Come on, come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, let's give God some good praise, worthy of the King this morning. Come on, we're thankful today. We have a good God. Thank you, Jesus.
The mountains and the sunshine you created with simple words. Yes, you did. Lily of the valley. Rose of Sharon. You worship by the angels in heaven. The Lamb who was slain. Come on, church, let's sing this out all together now. One voice. Lord, I surrender. Come on. Lord, I Yeah. 
just give it to you, Jesus. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. Come on, the spirit is moving right now. You sing it out. Lord, I surrender. Oh, you can feel the freedom in this place. Sing it one more time. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I surrender. Yes, yes, right now, Lord. Lord, I Give the Lord one more big shout of praise in this place. Come on, God is on the move in the house today. Give him glory, give him worship. Hello, Legacy Church. Here are our announcements. Are you an early riser? Every Sunday from 9 to 10, we will have coffee and pastries. We would love to have you out before our service. Join us every Wednesday for Bible study at 7 p.m. Are you in grades 7 through 12? If so, we have a place for you. Legacy Youth every Wednesday at 7 p.m. The youth will also be doing a retreat next year. Please see Gabe and Alicia for more information. Missionettes is our young girls' ministry. Every last Wednesday of the month, see Sister Lisa for more info. Come join us Friday, November 5th at 7 p.m. for our prayer night. Come get a hold of God and see Him move in your life. Sunday, November 14th, we will be having water baptisms. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer if you would like to participate. Friday, November 19th at 7 p.m., we will be having our women's Bible study. Come enjoy fellowship and the Word of God. Saturday, November 21st at 5 p.m. is our annual community Thanksgiving dinner. If you would like to participate or donate, please see Sister Chella. Reminder, we will not be having service Wednesday, November 24th. Please mark your calendars for December 19th for our annual Christmas program and toy giveaway. Thank you and enjoy the rest of our service. All right, that is all our announcements. Okay, uh, we, we, are wanna, we wanna go before God in prayer, so I'm gonna ask you to please stand again. Um, you know, there's a scripture in the Gospels, the Bible says, knock. And the door shall be opened unto you. Ask, and it, sh it should be given to you. If any of you would come to my house, and you would order my door, and you would stand at my door, and you would never knock or ring the bell, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know that you're there. Unless you have a camera. Today people have cameras, so <laughs> then they tells you that someone's there. Um, but if you went to my front door, and you never knocked, I cannot open the door to you, okay? Prayer is the same way. Prayer, um, it's about asking, asking God, uh, praying and asking God. Why? Because God is able to do that which we cannot do. There are some things in our lives that we just can't do it. And no matter how smart we are, no matter how talented we are, no matter how rich you are, doesn't matter. There's some things in life that we cannot do. And that's when we bring it to God. Amen. Because God is almighty and he's all powerful and he can do the impossible. Only God can change lives. Amen. Only God is the power, has the power to change lives. Yes. Um. God has the power to forgive sins. And so only God can save us. And so today, maybe you have something in your life that you say, man, I've been trying and trying. This can, I can't do it. Then you bring it to God. It's your impossibility. We serve the God of the supernatural, that he can do the impossible. And so today, uh, we're going to go before God in prayer 
Because that's what God wants us to do. Because when we come in church, yes, we come and we worship. And then we pray. We pray unto God. And we tell God, God, you are God and I'm not. God, you can do all things. And so uh, it's, it's very important that we do that. And so today you came into this place. And there's something in your life that you said, man, God, I can't do it. Only you can do this. Um, it can be, a, I don't know what it is. Only you know. And so we're going to sing a song. We're going to sing one more song. And what we want to do, I want you to come, step out of your seats. That's the step of faith. You step out of your seats and you come to the front. And you tell the Lord, God, here's my need. Here's my, my necessity. This is what I want you to help me with. Whatever it is, you bring it to God. And so as we sing this song, I want you to bring your need to the Lord here at the altar. St just stand here, and I'll pray with you really quickly, and we're going to believe God because that's why we come in church, because we want God to help us with our needs. As we sing this song, you can bring your need before the Lord here in the front. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. All over this place, you came with the need. You bring it before God today, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, you're almighty. You're all powerful, God. In the name of Jesus, almighty God. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, almighty God. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In spite of what I see, Lord, I believe. But help my unbelief, I choose to trust you. No matter what I feel, let faith arise. Let faith arise. For my champion's not dead, he is alive. Oh, and he already knows my every need. Surely he will come and rescue me. Oh, God. Every voice today. Oh God of miracles, God. Come on. We need your supernatural love to break through. Nothing's impossible. You're the God of miracles. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated this morning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pick up our offering today. Um, we want to just continue to be faithful to the Lord in our giving as we, God has been faithful to us. We want to be faithful to the Lord, and we have many different uh, ways that we can give, either here, uh, online, and you can do that, and so we encourage you to do that. But today, we want to believe God uh, for our needs and pray for one another, uh, for your needs as well. You know, as we give to the Lord, I think about this, when we're faithful to God and we give to God, yes, I'm thinking about the needs here of the church, the house of God, but I'm also thinking about you. I'm thinking about those that own businesses. We want to pray that God would just bless your business, that God would just uh, make your business flourish, that God would just bless it. And uh, for those that work, man, that the favor of God will be upon you, man, that, uh, that God's favor will be with you, that your supervisors and landlord, whatever they may be, uh, managers will just see what you do and that the hand of God will just bless you. Amen. And so we want to believe God that for that and we want to believe God for here for the kingdom of God. Let's give to the Lord. Let's continue to be faithful to him. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I ask, my God, that you will bless this offering. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will bless your people. Bless them, God. Bless them in their homes, their businesses, their jobs, in the name of Jesus. And bless your church, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, platform, here today, and um, praise God. We want to welcome you uh, this morning to our service. We want to welcome those watching from home as well, and we're praying for you. Those that may, can't make it because you're sick, we pray that you just feel a lot, lot better, okay? Um, and also, we want to welcome those that are here joining, whether it's friends and family joining, those that are going to be baptized. Yes, Amen. <laughs> We just want to thank you and welcome you here today and celebrating this very, very special event and time in these people's lives. And it's a very powerful event that is going to be taking place. Uh, so today, I just want to say a few words in regards to water baptism and pray that um, God will speak to us. Amen. Uh, in the book of Mark, chapter 1 and verse 9. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, and verse 9. As you find your place there, I was reading a funny story about this church that was having water baptisms at the lake. 
Okay, they usually have them at the lake. Today we're going to improvise, and we're going to have them in church in a blow-up jacuzzi. Okay, so that's going to work for us today. The Bible doesn't tell us that it has to be at the lake or at the ocean. It can be anywhere. And so today, this is going to improvise. As a matter of fact, it's actually a little warm for you. We plugged it in. We will make sure we unplug it before you get in. That way nobody gets hurt. So, but no. But no, this, uh, this church was having a water baptism at a lake. And there was a huge line of people making a line to get baptized. And this man that was at the lake, he was a little uh, drunk. He seen the line. He got in line too. At the end of the line, he came in. They said, do you want to get baptized? He said, sure, I'll get baptized. And he was pretty drunk. And the pastor dunked him. And he said, did you find Jesus? And he said, no, I didn't find Jesus. He said, okay, let's dunk him again. And they dunked him again. He said, did you find Jesus? He said, no, I, I didn't find Jesus. And they dunked him the third time. But this time they left him in there about 30 seconds under the water. And then they brought him up. And they said, did you find Jesus? Man, he said, I didn't find him. Are you sure he fell right here? <laughs> so this man didn't even know why he was getting baptized, but that's why today uh, we are going to uh, look at the Word of God and see what the Word of God speak, says about this amazing time for us today in regards to baptism. In the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible says, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and he was baptized. He was baptized by John in the Jordan River. And so here the word of God tells us that John, uh, that John the Baptist baptized Jesus, the Son of God, and leaving us this example for us to follow. And it was not just something for us to do, but it was an, a very powerful an, uh, uh, event that will take place in the lives of every single believer. And here, here uh, what an amazing thing that God incarnate the son of god that come into that god that came in the flesh jesus amen they came into this world and he came and he uh he gave us an example here about baptism to follow this example of baptism amen and so today i want to look at just a few things in regard regards to that and we know that uh, um, i'm just going to look at four things in regards or four pictures about water baptism. First of all, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38. Acts 2, 38. The Bible says, uh, Peter replied and said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will... Uh, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let me read that again. Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So here, you know, I put up that ring up there, that wedding ring, because baptism, it, it is a... Um, it is an identification that you are, uh, uh, that you're saved. That's part of it. It's like, and I put up the wedding ring, is because the wedder, one of the things that your wedding ring re represents, uh, it identifies you as a married person. That's why people, when they get married, they have this a wedding ring, you know? And it's very important that if you're married, you wear your wedding ring. Why? Because it identifies you. It identifies you that you're married and that that's if you're somewhere uh, out there at work or shopping, people know you're married. You're taken. So, this man, this person's taken. I'm not even going to try. Amen? Okay. And so, baptism, baptism is, is something like that. Amen. Baptism represents, one of the things that it represents, amen, is it identifies you. It identifies you as a Christian. Amen. So one of the things that it does for us, amen, it's like 
It's like that wedding ring of commitment. It's our commitment to God, and it, it represents that you and I have accepted Jesus Christ into our lives. It is something that you're declaring before people and before God, like those that will be baptized today. What they're saying is, I believe, I have faith in the Son of God. This is what you're saying. I have faith in Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. Amen. And I believe that of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when a person gets baptized, you're identifying yourself with Christ. When a person, when a person gets baptized, you're identifying yourself that you believe in Jesus Christ, in the Son of God. You're, you're, what you're saying is, I believe in Jesus, I have accepted him into my life, and I have decided to follow Jesus, amen. From now on, till I die, my commitment is to follow Christ with all my mind, my strength, and my heart. Thank you, Jesus, amen. <laughs> and so... What, so uh, baptism is so necessary for us. It's part of our Christian life. It identifies you as a believer, as a Christian. And it, it, it brings you into the family of God. When we had a church there in San Jose, when we were pastors there in San Jose, there was a lady that came to our church. She was an elderly woman. Um, uh, man, they, she came to our church, had never been in church or hadn't been in church for many, many years. They lived down the block from our church. And one day, her and her son showed up, and they, they loved the church. They were, uh, uh, I mean, ecstatic about the church. They just loved the church. And they accepted Jesus Christ into their lives. And I remember we had water baptisms, but at that time, we went to a lake. The lake was pretty cold, and um, the sister's name, she, she's already went to be with the Lord. Her name was Sister Pearl, and Sister Pearl, I remember, she came. She said, Pastor, I want to get baptized. I said, Sister Pearl, man, I would love to baptize you, and I told her, but you have to remember, we're going into this lake, and the lake's going to be very cold. And are you sure you want to do this? We can just sprinkle a little bit of water on you, and man, you'll be good to go. No, she said, I want to go down. I want the whole thing. I said, okay, Sister Pearl. And, um, and we went to the lake, and she got in line, and we dunked her. And we put her in the water all the way in, and it was a very cold, a very cold lake. And, you know, um, she wanted to identify she wanted to identify that she had accepted Christ in her life, and she said, I believe in Jesus. I, I believe that he's the son of God. I believe that he's real in my life, and I have made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. Amen. So why is it so important that we get baptized? Why is baptism so necessary? First of all, Jesus did it. Left you and I an example. It identifies you. Jesus left the example. God, I want to do the same thing. And, and um, I want to follow your example. So um, for those that are getting baptized today, man, it's an amazing thing because you are identifying yourself with Jesus. You're going to follow Jesus. You have made a decision in your heart to follow Jesus Christ. You're identifying with Jesus, what you're saying, what you're telling the world, amen, what you're telling the world that is I am a believer, I am a Christian, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, Amen. So one of the first things that uh, baptism is, is an identification. It identifies you as a Christian, amen, as a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, number two, the book of Romans, chapter 6, and verse 4. The Bible says, therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. Amen. Let me read that again. Therefore, we were buried with him 
through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in the newness of life. So water baptism, it, it is also a representation. Just as Jesus died, he went to the cross, and Jesus died for us. And he was buried. But then we know he resurrected. I mean, but just as he was buried, it, it, is, it is just the same thing for you and I. It is, uh, baptism today, it is like a burial. It's like a funeral. You might say, wow, I didn't want to come to that. Yes, it's almost like a funeral today. Why? Because what we're saying, what's going to take place today, is that my old life, amen, my old life is going to be buried, no longer the same. My life is not going to be the same no more, amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I'm a believer of Jesus Christ. I am buried, through baptism is showing that our old life will be buried, not in that water, because we know it's just water. That water comes from here, Sacramento, city works or whatever, where the water comes from. But we know that it is, it is just, just as Jesus died for us, he was buried. Our lives, baptism shows that we also are buried with him, meaning our old man, our old person, that person that we used to be is no longer alive, amen. We are new creatures in Jesus Christ, amen. We are new believers in Jesus Christ. We are new people in Jesus Christ. We are born again in Jesus Christ, amen. We're no longer the same, amen. It is an act of faith that just as Jesus was buried, your old life will be buried. I know who, I'm, who I was without Christ. And baptism is just a form. They buried the old man. The new man is rising, risen. Amen? Um, I was reading the story of uh, Pat Summerall. Uh, Pat Summerall was an NFL player and announcer. And uh, for many people didn't know that uh, Pat Summerall uh, was an alcoholic. He was an alcoholic for many, many years. I was just reading the story, and he said that uh, his, one of his daughters said, uh, Dad, in public, I am so ashamed to be your daughter. Because he was just a wreck. He was just an alcoholic. And um, Pat Summerall, late, late in his years, he, he was at a, a clinic recovering as an uh, alcoholic. And uh, somebody told him about Jesus while he was there. And he said he began to read the Bible. And when uh, he began to read the Bible, first thing that he did when he left the clinic, he went to a church. And at that church, they were having water baptisms. And he said, sign me up. Sign me up. It says that he was later baptized in Texas. Uh, Pat Summerall described emerging from the water, coming from the water, said he, uh, he has surfaced into a new being in a new world. He said, for the first time in my life, I knew what it meant to be born again. I had already accepted Jesus Christ. Now I felt I was truly part of his family. I felt happier and freer than I ever have ever, ever had. I felt as though my soul had been washed and clean. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So what does water baptism represent? It represents a burial. Your old person will be buried. It represents that. Just as Jesus was buried, your old life, your old ways, your life of hopelessness, 
is buried. Pat Summerall had no, he had no future. He had no hope in life. He was an alcoholic. When he came out of the world, uh, come, he, when he came out of the water, he said, it was like I, I was in another world. The old Summerall was gone. The old you will be buried. You're still going to have the same name. You're still going to be the same person. But your old person will be buried. The old man. The old woman. And today it's going to be all women because it's all going to be ladies getting baptized. Um, so what does it represent? It represents a burial. It represents a commitment. Right? The ring represents. It's, it, it is a, it's symbolic in that sense. Um, and also represent, represents a newness of life. In, in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 12, it says, We were buried with him in baptism, wherein, wherein also you are risen. You are risen with him through, through, the, faith of, uh, 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 through the faith in Christ. Amen. Um, similarly, water baptism, it is a way of identifying a person as a disciple of Jesus Christ, but it is also a, a representation of our newness in Christ. We are new in Jesus. Our old life is buried. Amen. We are risen in newness in Christ. Um, when you get out of that water, okay, when we raise you out of that water, man, you're going to feel good. I think it was um, James Brown that said that. I, will, I feel good. Amen. Um, as soon as you raise out of the water, I'm going to tell you something. You may or my, may not feel anything new. Why? Because you don't go by your feelings. You don't go by feelings. It is an act of faith. When you are raised out of that water, the Bible says you're going to be raised in newness of life. Just as Jesus was resurrected from the dead uh, um, with power. Amen. That's the same thing with you and I. As we are risen, as, we are, as God has saved us. Amen. As God has saved us. Baptism, it is just a representation of that. That we're now new creatures in Christ. We're new people in Jesus Christ. And maybe today, maybe today when you leave, when you stand when you come out of that water, you may not feel anything. I have to be honest with you. It does not mean nothing happened. You have to understand that. Please be, uh, understand this this morning that something very powerful will take place today because you're taking this act of the step of faith today and acting in obedience to the Lord. And maybe when you leave that water today, you may not say, wow, I seen heaven. No, you may not see anything. But let me tell you something. The devil will lie to you. The devil will tell you, oh, that was silly. What did you do that for? The devil might tell you, man, that nothing happened. No, something very, very powerful happened. Amen. Amen. And uh, I was reading a story about a man that was working at this uh, uh, company. He actually worked for the Ford, man, Ford company. He worked for a Ford company, and he was, uh, this man ended up accepting Jesus Christ into his life. He got changed. He got saved. He got baptized. The day he got baptized, he went back to work. He brought back all the tools that he had stolen from his job. He came to his boss. And he had a whole bag of tools. He said, I want to return these because yesterday I got baptized and I know I'm, uh, I'm a new person now. And here it is. And here's all the tools. His boss looked at him. He said, man, I wish the whole company would get baptized. <laughs> he said, man, all kinds of people probably been stealing from me. But um, bapti baptism, it's a newness of life. Newness, just like that 
couch right there. Part of it is old. That's who we were before. Part of it is new. Now that's where, how God is within us. The great news about that is this. That sometimes walking in the newness of life may seem like an impossibility. Maybe for us that are going to be baptized today, doing what's right before God, you may say, man, that is so, so hard. You're absolutely right if you try to do it on your own strength. But the great news is that God did not leave this to ourselves. God gives us his strength, his power, his spirit, so that we can live for him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So that is a picture of baptism, is newness. And last of all, of course, it is the power of God. It's an act of obedience. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verse 19. The Bible says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So baptism, it is a command from God, but as, we, uh, as it is a commandment from God, um, because, you know, we, we want to obey the Lord. We want to obey the commandments of the Lord. We want to obey what God commands us. Can I hear an amen? In closing here, um, so we want to um, honor God. We want to obey the Lord. And as we obey the Lord, one of the things that God does for us, whenever a person obeys God, God rewards you for that. Jesus calls every single one of us to, be, to believe upon him. God calls us to obey him. Baptism is an act of obedience. People say, well, I don't want to get baptized. Um, if you're a believer, you want to obey the Lord. You want to obey God. And as you, as you do that, one of the things that takes place in your life is that God just rewards you and blesses you. And God helps you. I, I mentioned to you guys not too long ago that I got baptized again. I got baptized two times. I got baptized when I first got saved. And I just did it because everybody else was doing it. I left God. I went back to doing drugs and all that. And that was over 30 years ago. That was in 1984. That's almost 40 years ago. Wow. Time flies. 1984, I got baptized. I was a young man, and immediately after getting baptized, I went back to my old ways. 35 years later, the Lord said, you know, you got baptized a long time ago, but you didn't even, you didn't hold your commitment. You didn't, you didn't do, what, you, you didn't follow me when you got baptized. You left for several years. And the Lord said, get baptized. I said, Lord, I'm the pastor of the church now. Who's going to baptize me? But somebody did. But you know, pride, my pride started coming in. My pride. It's like, what? And I, I remember this is what the Lord said. I got baptized. Jesus didn't have to get baptized. There was no sin in him. And he did it. And I said, okay, Lord. It was an act of faith, an act of obedience. When you obey the Lord, something very powerful takes place in your life. When you obey God, God blesses you. And I think maybe two or three years ago, I did get baptized again as the pastor of the church. I had to swallow my pride. I said, Lord, I'm going to do it out of obedience. Um, I did it. Something very powerful took place. I felt that there was a newness. It was weird. 
I never looked at baptism the same again because I always thought it was more symbolic. It wasn't. It was something that was very powerful. When you obey God, something beautiful takes place, something very powerful. And so for those that are they're going to be baptized today, you're taking a step of faith and you're obeying God. Something beautiful will take place in your life and in your heart. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> so in saying that, uh, we, we're gonna, I'm going to turn it over to um, song service here. And, um, but before I do that, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ into your hearts, maybe those are watching from home as well. Um, one of the first steps before getting baptized is accepting Jesus. Believing in Jesus and accepting Him as your Lord and Savior. So if anyone here today hasn't accepted Jesus Christ, or maybe from home, and you want to do that today, please raise your hand. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. I want you to please repeat this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've, I confess that I am a sinner. I confess that I have sinned against you. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing a couple of songs as we prepare to get baptized. For those that are going to get baptized, you can go ahead and start get preparing for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For the rest of us here this morning, as we just engage in a little bit more worship this morning, you know, one word comes to mind today, gratitude. How many are thankful for the opportunity we have to come to know Jesus in this way? Thankful for an opportunity for, for new hope, for new life. It doesn't matter where, we, where we've been. It doesn't matter who you were. God renews. God restores. Thank you, God. Father, this morning, Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for these individuals who are making this decision, Lord. And Father, today our hearts are thankful in that we celebrate today, Lord. We're so thankful, God. Have your way. Bless this time, God, in Jesus' name. Oh, my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do. But every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one 
response I've got just one move With my arms stretched wide I will worship you Come on! So I throw up my hands Praise you again and again Cause all that praise one more time this morning. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory today. Come on, give him praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, make a 
joyful noise we celebrate this morning. Oh, we worship you. You know, all right, amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and um, move forward. So t today we are going to celebrate and join with these that are going to be baptized. Today they're declaring their faith in Christ, their decision to follow Jesus, amen. We're going to bury them. We're going to bury their old life. No more hopelessness. No more shame, no more guilt, none of those things. And they will be raised in newness of life, the Bible says. Just as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead with power, so will those here today. Um, like I said at the end of my message, after I got baptized again, I realized that baptism is not symbolic. It's actually a very powerful act. Of faith. It's supernatural. It's a very supernatural act. Uh, I had made the mistake in years before to think it was symbolic. It's not symbolic. It's a very supernatural, very powerful act. And so today, I have a list of those that are going to come. The first one that w uh, is getting baptized is Laura Hernandez. All right. How old are you? She, Laura is uh, 15. Uh, her sister right behind her is going to be also getting baptized. And she's making her decision to follow Jesus today. Amen. So somebody. Uh, Laura Hernandez, me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, I baptize you in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right. She ran out. Okay, cool. Uh, you know, it's actually really nice in here. Um, the next person is her sister, Anna Hernandez. And Anna is 13 years old. And today she's declaring before you and before God that she believes in Christ and she has made a decision to follow Jesus. So today, Anna, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you can kneel down. Uh, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right, now we have Michelle. Michelle Renee. Okay. Michelle Renee um, also has made a decision to follow Christ. And today, she did want to say a couple words. Yeah. Okay. New life, new year. And may God bless my church in the universe. Yeah. All right. Woo. Praise God. You want to kneel down? And so today, uh, Michelle Renee. Me, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we have a San Juanita Rangel, 
And um, I asked her, Juanita, do, so Juanita, do you want me to baptize you forward, backwards? She said, Pastor, give me the whole thing backwards. I'll take it all. Um, but hey, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So if you want to go ahead and kneel down. And so San Juanita Rangel, me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we have Cynthia Morla, and um, she is last but not least, you know, uh, praise God. And um, so, praise God. Today, Cynthia uh, is declaring before you, this congregation, and before God, that she not only believes in Christ, but she has made a decision to follow Jesus with all her life and with, with all her strength and all her heart. And I know that... Um, she did want to say a couple words, so. Um, really, it's to thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. It means so much to me at this moment in my life. Um, I've been baptized, too, before uh, by you, um, but I backslid, and I wasn't committed, and this time it's different, so this time is for not only commitment, but obedience to his word. And I pray that I'm able to do the will of God. Thank you. Well, okay, Cynthia. I'm, th I'm glad that you said that, uh, Cynthia. We cannot do the will of God on our own. Okay. It's God that's going to do it for us. And I know that um, sometimes people... Uh, feel that okay so this is impossible it is impossible with us but with God all things are possible okay so I mean that. Cynthia Mora as as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ I now baptize you in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Praise God. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. This, been, this has been an amazing, supernatural act of faith that we have seen with our eyes today. Amen. Let us never look at baptism as symbolic again. Let's make, let's, let us look at it as a supernatural act of faith from God. Amen. What took place here, only God can do it. Amen. What is what is going to transpire in their lives, God's going to do some amazing things. Amen. So, uh, praise God. I'm going to go ahead and close it in prayer, then the music will continue. Let me go ahead and close it. Heavenly Father, thank you for those that got baptized today. Father, we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, my God, your hand, your favor, your blessing upon every single one of them. I pray for Anna, I pray for Laura, for Cynthia, Michelle, and San Juanita. Father, we pray for them. Your favor, your blessing be upon them. Lead them, guide them, strengthen them to follow you, my God. Father, let them be an example unto others in this world. Use them in a mighty way, God. We thank you, Lord, and we pray for all of us here today that you will bless our day and our week, my God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. We'll turn it over to the music. And we do want to invite you all once again. We've got refreshments in the back. We'd love for you to grab something. They've got a lot of good stuff.